Okay, hello to all. Today I'm going to be giving an overview about the Siege Studios Essentials Master Course. It's a painting course held in the UK for painting, 40k, or just any miniatures. And for those of you who want the too long didn't read version, let me just say this. I enjoyed this course so much, I've just paid and booked up one of my friends to go on it because I think it'd be really useful for him as well. So I hope that tells you everything you need to know. So what I'm going to cover today is breaking down for you what's on the course and what I think you can get out of it. And I thought it'd be good to begin with to first start off by talking and giving you a little intro about Seed Studios as a company and how it is that I'm working with them. If you want to skip straight to my overview of the painting course, just check out the timestamp below in the notes or the top comment that I've posted. Now, as you will have noticed for some time, I have been running the Seed Studios banner on the front of my videos. And that is because Siege have replaced MSI and I'm pleased to be working with Siege because Siege Studios are essentially the premium painting service for you and your miniatures. They're producing the highest quality of painted miniatures in the UK and the reason they're able to deliver quality is through the talent that they hire and also their working methodology. That's actually the process by which they are painting the miniatures. All of their painters are award winners, either golden demon winners, finalists or professional mini painters. The basic level is above what you're going to describe as tabletop and they offer a range of services right through to their platinum which is competition quality painting. They also provide building, conversion of your miniatures, sculpting, freehand paint design for minis, magnetizing and transfer decal application. Now while it's based in the UK, anybody can commission models to be painted by Siege, whether you are in the US or beyond. Now as per usual, full disclosure, this is quite obviously a sponsored video as part of me working with Siege. But saying this, I would strongly hope that by now you guys know me well enough to know that I only work with people and companies who I believe will deliver to you in terms of services and products. Because I simply wouldn't work with a company that I don't think delivers on value or quality. And I always make this very clear to any sponsors I work with from the first conversation that I have with them. The positives for you guys of me working with Siege is that you get a bit of an insight into the company and its service. You can know that this is also helping to support me and the channel and the content that I make here. And down the line, I may even be able to be offering you guys some giveaways of fully painted minis or who knows what. So I spent a good deal of time checking out Siege after they first contacted me because as with any business, I always want to know what they're all about before we agree to start working together. And I say this because what I would never want is for me to be promoting something disingenuously or that I wouldn't value or use myself. Siege offers one of the most comprehensive packages of services that's available in the UK, like from building, magnetizing, converting and the different tiered levels of painting. And also just knowing what you're gonna get is more important than ever these days because if you're gonna pay out for a service, you want to be sure that that service is gonna deliver you quality results. In addition to this, they also run regular painting courses, and as I say, one of which I recently attended. And these are designed to help you, yourself, become a better painter, to give you the skills, the understanding, the confidence to push yourself to levels of painting quality that you maybe didn't think you could achieve. And I'm gonna be talking about this at length in the second half of the video. Seed Studios is run by James Otero, who is a multi-award winning painter, winner of the prestigious Golden Demon Award. James is the managing director of Siege. He's also one of three founding members of Artist Opus, which you guys will know is a premium miniature brush provider. And I'm hoping to showcase some of their products for you guys down the line as well. Now I've spent good time this year talking with James and he loves 40K just about as much as any of us. In fact, often our business chats on the phone end up becoming hour long discussions just about 40K. And the reason I that is for one it's always a really good sign to see somebody is actually a genuine and a personable person but also because this carries through onto his painting course as well this creates a really good atmosphere and i'm sure if you were to ask anyone who's attended they would tell you the same so through the year what i'm going to be doing with siege is showcasing for you guys some minis that i get painted up by siege and i'm going to tie this in with the law as i've done before like on the navigator video i want to showcase for you what they do and what you can expect from their service so i might get say an individual character painted up or say a basic squad at different tier levels of quality so you can understand the difference because not everybody wants the same thing from a painting service. Now down the line I may even be able to do some giveaways with some special minis so we'll see what happens with that. I also want to address a question that I always see people ask which is why would I use a miniature painting service? Followed by the inevitable second question of isn't it prohibitively expensive? Well to answer the first point this is not unlike so many things because it is subjective. Some people feel that painting is personally important to them and they want to learn it all themselves. I myself, I love painting. 
and for many painting the models is half the fun. For others though, it is about just collecting and admiring the miniatures, or it's about playing the game but not getting into and taking the time to do all the painting and modelling side of it at all. The bottom line is, you do you, each to their own. So what might be right for you, may not be right for some, you get it. And you see this is the thing with 40k itself, it's a very diverse product and many people get into it for very different reasons. Some might consider themselves to be decent at painting, but now and then they decide they want to have a character or a display model that they absolutely love and they want to get it painted up at the highest quality, to display and admire at home. So then the second question of who would pay to have miniatures painted, surely that costs just way too much. I always find this to be a pretty disingenuous question because anybody should know that using a painting service for minis isn't going to be cheap for the obvious reason that it takes a lot of skill and a lot of time and paying somebody for skill and time no matter what the profession always comes at a premium. Siege Studios offer various tiers of quality so if you just want table ready minis you can pay a lower price but if you want premium display pieces they have that option as well. This is all very clearly detailed on their website with a great many examples of completed work. You can go and check it out for yourself. You can email them to get a quote for your own project. And if you choose to do so, give me a reference in your inquiry. It's always really appreciated, guys. I don't get any commission or anything like that. It's just a simple, useful courtesy for Siege to know that you found their services via me. Now, here's the main thing to keep in mind, though. People do pay for miniatures to be painted. In fact, a great many people do, because if you have the talent, painting miniatures can be a full-time living. And this is why Siege are able to have an entire business focused around it. In fact, as an example, I know that one of my Patreon supporters, and also from the US, was talking to me via Discord recently, and he decided that he wanted to submit an order to Siege, and I discussed with him what he was looking to get done, so maybe if he's feeling generous, we can check out the finished models when they come back to him. But to summarise all of this, really I decided to start working with Siege because they're a quality company and I really like James as well, he's delivering a quality product and for just myself I also attach their understanding of what it means to be a YouTube producer. And what I mean by that is that when I have often discussed with businesses who want to work with me and so on, you can find that marketing departments have really unrealistic expectations of what producers can offer them. And this is something that I've often heard from other YouTube producers, more and more Twitch producers that I know personally. So finding a company that is on the same page and actually understands what you're doing and how they want to work with you is very constructive and it's very positive for me. So a couple of months ago I travelled up to Manchester, that's Stockport, to attend the Siege Studios Essentials Master Course. This was hosted at Element Games who provide another great service, they sell 40k products at a solid discount and tons of paints and other materials, and I should know because I buy from them now because they have a discount. If you want to check out Element, again check out my link down below this video because that also helps me out guys. Now Siege hosts their painting tuition days all over the UK, you can find out when the next event is happening nearest to you via their website which is linked in the notes below this video. The Essentials course costs £125 for two days, and the Blending and Weather course is £75 for a one-day event. Now there is some overlap between those two courses because essentially if you do the shorter one you're getting a shorter package, if you do the bigger one you're getting a more comprehensive package, but basically the two-day covers more subject matter as you would expect, primarily airbrush use, wet palettes, some more details about shading, transfer decals, gems, lenses, brush control, it's a more in-depth comprehensive study session. Now if you live outside the UK and are unable to travel to attend one of these painting courses, Siege have just recently opened their Patreon page which will have regular updates showcasing techniques and tutorials and you can find this also linked in the notes below. Now I initially had no idea what to expect from this or what would be involved because I've never attended a painting course before. I also had taken along some of my own recent minis for James to critique which he provides for attendees at the end of the course. Now for myself I would consider my ability as a fairly middle of the road painter currently. I feel happy with how I paint my minis but a lot of my older models need a full rework and I'm actually going to be doing a video about that at some point soon. But as with anything no matter your standard you can always learn more. I've been painting more this year than I have for some time and this helped me feel more comfortable going into this but I was curious to see what standard others attending the course would be at, just out of curiosity, to see what kind of painters the course was going to attract. I started painting miniatures in the early 90s and pretty much all I had to go on then was White Dwarf and the 40k box art itself, and that was it. The internet was not commonly used back then, you couldn't look up techniques, you couldn't share techniques, so instead we all just had to learn for ourselves, and this is why I've recently been stripping back many of my old miniatures, because they are a literal disaster. Important note though, always take a picture 
of your old miniatures before you strip them down because even if they are a crime against painting you're always going to want to be able to appreciate looking back at your old paintwork and seeing your forward progression. Suffice to say though my learning curve over the years has been steady but had I been able to attend a course like this the speed at which my painting and my understanding of how to paint miniatures would have advanced considerably faster and given me better results much sooner and I also wouldn't find myself having to go back and redo work. So what does the course mean by its title, the Essentials Master Course? Is it for beginners, mid-level painters, high-end painters? The answer is actually all of these. I think dependent on your level of painting, you would obviously get more or less out of it, but whatever your level, I think it would be worthwhile. And with that said, you will be using an airbrush and also need some decent brush control for techniques that we were learning. Although brush control is a part of the course, but if you are brand new to painting, like if you have literally just picked up a brush for the first time, I would say it's worth taking a little bit of time to try some basic painting yourself before going on a course like this. Say, you know, just paint up a squad and then, you know, you're good to go. Not because you wouldn't be able to attend just fresh out the gate or you couldn't get anything out of it but just because if you have some very basic competency and you've actually tried stuff yourself in painting miniatures then when you come to attend a course like this I think you're going to get considerably more out of it at the end of the day. Once you've applied to the course you'll be given a full list of paints and equipment to bring on the day and if you have some of these or all that's great but if you didn't have the paints some are also available to share. You're going to likely want to take some paints away with you at the end of the day anyway. One small negative was on our painting list there was an error duplicated on that list and that should have been a shade not the paint that it was. If you see something like this you're not sure about make sure to just respond on email to them or just give them a call because James would always be there to just answer questions but you know if that's like the worst thing that happens for you it's not the end of the world. So they're going to ask you to bring your own equipment as well, things like an airbrush, compressor, lamp, as well as a hairdryer. Again, if you have these, it's helpful, but if not, some are available for people to use and share on the day. I had most of this equipment though, and it's good to use your own things because then you feel familiar with it and it's easier when you're learning. Another point I would make when it comes to equipment is that by attending a course like this, as others are bringing their own gear, it gives you the opportunity to check out potentially more expensive tools that you have maybe been considering picking up but were not sure on. For example, I have a fairly simple compressor for my airbrush. It's fine, but it's basic. And from attending the course and seeing the advantages of a proper compressor with an air reserve tank, this is something that I'll now confidently be looking to purchase in the future. Also the classic wet palettes. Now I have used one before, but on the day many people who had brought their own store-bought wet palettes. I always wondered, were they kind of just plastic and crappy, or were they actually better and worth the money? Were they quality products? It turned out they weren't. They suck. Which is actually kind of what my inclination, my gut feeling, was that these pre-made wet palettes kind of crap. It turns out that yes, the actual better option is to just buy a piece of, you know, plastic sealed tub for a couple of quid. I'll probably make a separate video talking about that in the future. Now, an immediate and obvious question that I'll answer right now is this. There are guides all over the internet about painting, right? So why attend a course? The answer to this is simple. You get a completely different experience doing this in person. Yes, you can look at online guides. Yes, you can help yourself to learn from them. But there's also something else you don't get from this, a professional instructor on hand to speak to you. If you make a mistake or you get a little bit confused, he's gonna be there to correct your error or guide you about what you specifically need to do. After the course itself, I had learned multiple new aspects to even things that I already felt I knew pretty well. And now I am considerably more confident about how to properly use specific techniques. I also personally found that the experience of being around the other course participants was very, very constructive. Through the day, we'd be checking out how one another had performed on the day different studies, we would compare and discuss what it was that we found difficult and in this way what you get from the day is not just a professionally led experience but also a great small forum for discussing between one another, comparing notes, learning from each other's problems or mistakes and this helps you do further the learning experience for yourself. So on the first day I was happy to arrive, just get in, chat with the guys who were arriving in that morning and found that the guy that I was sitting with on the day turned out to be Ross who runs the miniature blog Fauxhammer, whose excellent guide on transferring your Citadel paint into dropper bottles I had read only a few weeks previous. So this was a really great start to the day, to turn up and just found that there was somebody that I had some vague awareness of anyway. No, nobody that I'd spoken to before, but somebody that I kind of knew and we could discuss a few things. And just to say as well, his dropper bottle guide is one of the best that I've seen, and if I find a few days sometime, I'm gonna attempt it myself. I'll actually link that below. Now as soon as we got started, one thing becomes very, very clear, and that is you're going to be putting some work in over the two days in the course. It's not a slack, lackluster affair. You're going to be doing stuff from the morning to the end of the day solidly. 
There's no time at all wasted and in fact how to best use your time is a major talking point on the course. We all have very busy lives and most of us who are into 40k minis and into painting are in full time work or you got family etc. So finding time in the day, in the week to best paint your models and then how to use that time effectively is critical because maybe you only have a couple of hours here and there. Now as James would repeat throughout the course, you've paid to be here and I want to make sure that you get something out of it. So the course is not simply about raw technical skill based technique and this is another difference between online guides and the course. James talks a lot about theory and how to structure your painting more efficiently as well as thinking about what it is you're trying to achieve through your painting. We even discussed at one point how to lay out your desk space to manage your workflow better. And this approach is one of the things that I found most laudable from James and Siege, is the sincerity, the pride that comes with what they're providing for you. And I've had that impression regardless of whether it's Artist Opus or the Painting Tuition courses. Now, I know I can hear you guys in the comments, Luton, you're fawning over your sponsor. I know, I hear you okay, but seriously, if you go and read anybody else's overview of this course, you'll see the same impressions. You know, I can't tell you any differently if that is actually how things are, right? In fact, I'll probably link Fohammers. He did a review about this course as well in my video description. I'll put that down below so you guys can go have a read through and get a second opinion. And also you should just check out his blog regardless because he's got tons of great tips over there. I know he's working on some good stuff at the moment. So the point here is that from the start of the day, the sincerity is real. And I say this specifically because this is something that I personally, and I think many of us, value very very highly these days. We all had plenty of one-on-one -on -one time with James throughout the course. He was very diligent in helping out everybody, which is another key thing I was pleased to see. You didn't feel like you were just paid for and you're there and you know you're just you know you're basically just a customer and he's like right here's the stuff guys right off you go blah blah blah. No you know he was very involved and everybody received equal attention and assistance. There was no issues if anybody had a question you would take time to go through it to answer your question to make sure that you understood it. It felt like I say genuine sincere and really well worthwhile. And I say this as well as a person who is a deeply cynical person. <laughs> So what do we start with on the day? First off, we would look at airbrushes, how to break one down, how to clean it properly and the structure of the compressor with its reserve, how to use this, how to look after it properly. For me, this is all stuff that I was familiar with, but as I say, looking at a professional compressor and its advantages in delivering a more consistent airflow, as well as how it's running quietly until the reserve tank requires topping up, that's enough to make me want to make that purchase. So I got something out of it straight away. We then would look at airbrush technique, cleaning, using varnish, mixing correct consistencies for your paint in the hopper, how to get that right, and all of these things related to airbrushing would be continually discussed and illustrated over the two days of the course. We then would move on to discussing about light theory, the shape of objects, how shadow and light are cast, and how this should be considered in relation to your minis, and especially if you're looking to do a zenith on them. And this is implemented at the base coat level to provide extra depth of light in the colour of your mini. So then we were straight into our first practical application, we move on to apply this technique to a door panel. First we would be applying the zenith to the base of it and then applying our chosen colour over the top. Now although a door panel is a very straightforward and flat surface, it's good for ensuring that you're applying technique correctly. Applying colour and tone to a basic panel could be seen as being very simple, except it's worth considering that when you're applying a technique to something like a flat door panel, and specifically here trying to create tone in your colour, there's nowhere to hide because of the fact that it's a very plain door. You have to ensure it's a clean, well-executed finish. I think my effort for this wasn't the best that I could do. I gave a few too many passes with the airbrush and I lost some of that tone. It was still there but not as strong a transition as we were looking to achieve. But I'm happy to say I think I made up for this later because I was really satisfied with the other techniques that we would apply to the panel later. Then we'd move on to wet palettes and how to make one and how to use one. And this was something I was already aware of, but if you were not, this is invaluable. I was glad as well to hear that there are times when a wet palette is not the best choice to use. This is something I've said myself because I don't always use a wet palette. Except for myself, this was always just down to how I felt on the day, not really some high-end understanding of how and why you shouldn't use one. Although it's pretty obvious when you think about it, stuff like dry brushing, edge highlighting, all these kind of things, you don't really want a wet palette for that. And I think often this does confirm my thinking that wet palettes are often seen as being kind of superior because I guess they take a little bit more knowledge and setup and people always like wet palette, wet palette. It's not the be all and end all. In actuality, it's about using the right techniques at the right time to achieve your results in painting. And that's the main thing. In addition, what I would also learn here was how to properly thin down paint into multiple levels of consistency and transparency. Now you'd think that's crazy for somebody that's been painting for a long time, but I always just knew to kind of thin down my paints, but not to get into the very real specifics in terms of a layer, a wash and a glaze in terms of the consistency there. This is an absolutely critical piece of understanding that I was largely, like I say, unaware of before, at least in terms of the benefits that it can give you in application to a model. 
The majority of mini painters, even new to the hobby, understand that painting thinly is the correct way to apply paint because everybody says this forever everywhere. But then going further and having your paint broken down into pre-prepared consistencies is a very, very useful process to learn. James would go on to explain and demonstrate in detail how and why you would do this and the specific surfaces and elements of a miniature to apply this to. We would then take the instruction and demonstration we've been given on setting up the wet palette to correctly thin down our own paints into different consistencies for application and we begin applying these to our power swords which were provided. The colour choice was open to individuals, most people were choosing for the blues and the greens, a couple of people opting for a purple or a red. I went for the red because I wanted to try something a little bit different and the actual technique here is not especially complex in theory but application of it requires very good brush control and the theory in how you're applying the paint is applicable to many other instances of painting. So again, while the surface we're using here suits this technique specifically, this is something that you could very easily adapt to any number of different models and situations. James, as the instructor, was very quickly moving around everybody on the course to assist them, to give corrections where needed, to help people understand what it was they should be doing. On my sword that I was working on all was well up until about halfway through where I applied perhaps too much paint onto the center draw point of the shading and this needed to be blended and faded back into the other color. Making mistakes like this is all part and parcel of being on a tuition course because if you were already able to do this stuff you wouldn't need to be on the course. Having your painting instructor on hand to come over, explain to you what you need to do, showing you how to correct that is invaluable. In fact part of me feels it's worth making errors like this just so you're able to understand how to correct them. Once everybody had shaded their swords, we'd move on to the edge highlighting on them. And there's no real magic trick to edge highlighting, it's just something that requires a very steady hand and is a little bit of a pain in the ass to do. It's definitely not something that I would say everybody especially looks forward to doing. James gave us a quick rundown on the highlighting and then we'd apply it ourselves and finish up the swords. Everybody, no matter if they were new to painting or if they were experienced, produced excellent results that looked absolutely amazing. You can see this for yourself right now. Now if you're not personally a fan of the brightly coloured power swords, remember that what you're learning here is the technique. You could apply the same shading technique onto a metallic or use a lighter blend of colour to give a more bright, powerful energy effect. I can imagine trying this out with a white and a very light colour to give the impression of a sword that's white hot with energy and power. So again, it's the technique you're learning, this isn't teaching the definitive be all and end all way to produce a sword. We then just had a word on varnishes, the consistencies to use, when to use them, how mixes of varnish produce different results, and this was again something that I've used, but never used varnish in an airbrush before, nor thought about mixing up the ratios of different varnish, so another very useful piece of information there to take away. James quickly applied some varnish to our door panels with the airbrush, which we would then return to because we were going to apply our water slide transfers, the decals. Now we'd be using the chemical transfer application liquids Microsol and Microset, and these are something that I have personally used for some time, but again, it was still useful to see how James applied them, because that's always reassuring, and his approach was a little bit different to my own, but only very slightly. We did also make mention of how to apply transfers that can be sometimes difficult, such as on a knee pad, a shoulder pad, basically anything that isn't a nice, easy surface. So I might show you guys this some other time. There are plenty of videos online though about how to apply to a curved surface, so if you don't know this, you can easily find out. The bottom line though is that any transfer application can always be a little bit finicky. However, I have to say I was pretty pleased with my application on this one, and granted, it was on just about the flattest, most well-prepared surface you could hope for a transfer, but still, it looked very nice. And that was the end of day one because we wanted to let everything dry and so on. We'd have a little bit of a post day inspection of everybody's work, a bit of banter between the guys, discussing what we found hard, easy, interesting and so on, and then everybody was out and off for the day. So the second day, we'd be focusing on weathering our panels from the day before, painting faces, which I was dreading because honestly it's one of the most difficult things in miniature painting for me, and I think for many people. We'd then follow this with a strong discussion section on theory and some QA and critique of individuals. Everybody was able to listen in on the critiques as well, so be prepared for some unvarnished analysis of your work. So we started out with weathering, which is I think for not only me, but for most people, always a favourite. James began by walking us through and demonstrating the entire process, of course, and the theory that goes along with it, how you can apply and adapt the techniques for yourself. The final results again achieved by all were absolutely awesome. I myself have never liked miniatures that look too clean or flawless. In fact, a lot of my own minis have shoulder pads that are scarred and drilled out physically to create battle damage. The techniques we would be applying here ranged from fairly simple scratches to challenging deep scars and bleeding rust effects. Now, I had always thought that rust needed a specialist paint to achieve quality results, but actually this was for me the most surprising part of all of this, that I was able to, on my panel, achieve some very pleasing results with the rust. 
I went for challenging myself, so instead of having a few small dripping scars, I went for some different shapes and sizes, a difficult long scar, faded bleeding rust running down the entire panel from top to bottom, and I was really happy with the results we achieved here. The techniques to create weathering are not especially complicated, but what they do require is good spatial understanding, adding too much is going to make things appear over cluttered and perhaps look a little over the top and forced, but adding too little can make it feel empty, wrong placements of marks can feel very unnatural. Even though I've had some experience with this, I think the results that I achieved are much better than those that I've created before, and again, give me a lot of confidence. A couple of personal points that I would pick up on is that the weathering effects here are all achieved using paint. Now unsurprising because this is a painting course. I myself often like to actually physically damage my models like I say with cuts and drilled out bullet scars but that's not for everybody because many don't want to damage the actual model itself in this way. But if you were to combine the painting techniques here with actual damage the results I think would be very very impressive. So I will again look to try that out in another video because as I say I've got a few things there coming up. Now lastly, I do wish we had time to cover powdered pigment application for rust and so on. But again, look, I'll note that this is a painting course and there are some sources on how to apply such things wherever you want to look. It would have been great though to have this included, but you can see for yourself the results that we achieved and they are far from lacking, they are fantastic to look at. The one thing I missed out on was applying a lower level pass over my panel with an airbrush to finish it off with a tonal dust and dirt effect. I simply just ran out of time because I'd spent too long working on the rust and scratch effects for my panel because I wanted them to be perfect. The impressive thing here is how everybody on the course was able to use the techniques we learned to again not only produce quality results but to produce them consistently. As I said in regard to the power sword section, the results achieved here were really impressive and I think this is the important takeaway, that the skills being taught here are able to be learned and successfully applied by anybody new or with experience in painting. So then we came to the real agony which is face painting. Now I think I recall a physical groan going around the group on the day when we came to this because just about everybody knows what a pain in the ass painting faces can be on a miniature. Because I think we all know that painting the base and body of a mini is not super difficult to achieve reasonable results especially when you've got an airbrush. You know, spish spish, you're done. But painting faces or for example cleanly painting the eyes of a space marine, an elder, whatever, it's not something people especially look forward to and it's really going to separate the wheat from the chaff when it comes to painting. Because it's extremely small scale work, it's very fine controlled work, it's difficult, mistakes will be made. For me personally, I've always felt that I am okay at faces and they're passable, but it's never easy. So James would start us off by going over again the theory with the zenith, the airbrushing, the base coats on for us. Then we looked at glazing, shading, getting the eye painted in and highlighting the face and head of the miniature. Then we were all in to try this for ourselves. Now, I think we must have spent longer on this than any of the other techniques, despite the fact that we were working on an incredibly small painting area. The reason for this is that when you're painting a face, you have to very carefully manage how much glaze, how much shade is on your brush. Brush control is everything here. James demonstrated clearly for us his technique for painting eyes. When it comes to faces, there are different ways to produce results, but what we learned here would give you, again, consistent clean results every time. We also spent time covering different paint recipes of color combinations for different skins and different color tones, so we got a range there. With that said, my effort on my face was not my best work. I'm not sure if I was just tired, I really don't think I did a great job here, but that's honestly down to myself rather than the process, because it's just a very, very difficult thing. And the only way you're going to get that really refined is just through practice and repetition. What we learned though, I'll be applying to all my miniatures in the future, as the practical process is solid. So we were coming toward the end of day two now, and we'd spend a good hour or two covering theory and looking at how earlier techniques could be applied. Notably the glazes, the wash and layer consistency we've been using for the power swords. We'd also look at gems, glass, lenses, discussing how to apply these and using miniatures as examples, reference sheets to break down the process. I kind of wish we'd actually had time to apply some of these to miniatures ourselves, but essentially it's the same process we already learned and then just you're applying that to a different surface because that actually really is the point of the course itself. It's not about practicing every single piece of every single miniature you might encounter. It's about learning the skills for you to be able to handle yourself on whatever miniature you might be painting. We also discussed how to paint black and white miniatures, for example a Space Marine Apothecary or Black Legion Chaos Marine, how to get the right colour combinations for those, how to highlight them properly. And these are colour schemes that people often find problematic when it comes to finding correct colour combinations. Shades and highlights to get them really clean is something many people struggle with, so this was a really great piece of theory. 
And it's worth mentioning as well that as you go through the course, you're going to want to bring a notepad and you're going to want to write notes. And I say write notes because I think you would be unlikely to type up on a laptop what we were covering quickly enough. Also, some of the techniques, I was actually drawing small diagrams to help me understand and remember what it was we were covering for me to reference later and more easily understand. Because everything you're doing here is very, very visual. James was more than happy for everybody to also take pictures from their phones of the work, of the techniques, everything, so that people can use that for their own personal reference. So then to finish off we do an open QA session where we covered everything from energy weapons, heated metal, James discussed competition entry at length for anybody interested in that, what they needed to be thinking of to achieve at that level. And we also looked at space marine eye technique, chemical vials, capes, cloth, freehand illustrative painting. It was very comprehensive and this was a section where anything that had not been covered or we had personal difficulty with, we were able to ask. We had time to get through everything everybody wanted to, so this was one of the most beneficial sections. And again, I took reams of notes, I drew out some step-by-step -step illustrations for myself on how to use the techniques. And I would strongly recommend that anybody that attends does this for themselves because once you get home, once you've had that long journey, you come home, you rest, you wake up the next day, you are going to forget things. So it's very, very important that you note down stuff, especially if that's things that you critically need to know. So if you wanted me to summarize this course, I would say the main thing it's going to teach you is core competency, which is absolutely essential to learn. Because if you have that core competency in painting, this is when you can then start to push yourself with more advanced techniques. And I think you could apply this theory to just about any skill-based process. You have to have the basics solidly in place before you start experimenting with advanced processes. This is just common sense. For me, despite having painted minis for a large period of my life, I would hardly say that I have been consistent, mainly because I am just very busy and I haven't always been painting models month to month. And this has undoubtedly limited the progression of my skills. And I genuinely wanted this to change. And what James brought home to us on the course is that it's not solely about skill, but it's also about the theory behind much of what you're doing. And it's also about optimizing time and technique. And all of those things are going to be very, very important for what I personally have coming up to paint in my miniatures, my own miniatures. Because I have some major projects that I want to get completed, and this is going to help me greatly with that. I'm going to talk about this more later because I want to showcase my existing armies and talk about what I want to achieve with them. And I'll try to keep you guys involved here on the channel with that because I think it'll be really good to see the progression and showcase it. And on top of that, I think it will just be very motivational for me. The end assessment for me of the course was that I came away not only learning new practical skills, but more than that, I just had a really enjoyable weekend. It had been worth the five hour drive for me to get up there and attend, and I came away with new techniques, and in that two days, I'd greatly improved my own skills. The critique that I had with James was also extremely useful, and I appreciate the fact that he gives you a non-sugar-coated opinion of your work, because if he doesn't do that, how is he going to help you? Having a professional assess where you're at with your painting is not only about giving a subjective opinion, it's having someone look at where you're at and what you can do to improve upon and best optimize your work. For me, my feedback that I fully agree with is I need to paint gems and lenses to a higher standard to give stronger tonal variation in the models, more variation in power cables so they don't appear dull and flat, more tonal interest to my bases, and to gloss varnish the gems and nodes to again give them a correct look and to give your eye points of differentiation on the minis. Another important thing that James highlighted to all of us on the day was that he, of course, cares about technical skill when painting, but also to give consideration to the lore and background of the models. And at one point in the course, we would look at some of James's own miniatures, his squads that he painted up to discuss his approach and his rationale. And we got heavily into talking about specific unit markings on their Space Marines, and he'd explained to us how he always gave careful consideration to ensure that they were painted with correct and lore-specific detailing on armor, weapons, unit markings, etc. This for me was obviously a big deal, because if somebody is taking that level of attention to detail, then you know it's something they are very personally invested in. Now everybody gets to take away your own individual work from the course itself, which is again a great thing for you to use as your own reference material in the future. It helps remind you of the techniques and how you achieve them. Anybody attending the course is also invited to a graduate Facebook and Discord group. Now everywhere you look these days online, there are techniques and how-to guides. Some of these are free, some of these are paid for. But what you don't get with any of these is the first-hand physical look at what's happening. If you're trying to learn a technique, you can't interact with the person making the guide and ask them if you're doing it correctly, or if you make an error, how to easily fix it other than just starting again. There's also the benefit of just being in a room with a bunch of other hobbyists who are all there talking about the models and the painting and their own experiences. So the course is not just solely about learning techniques, it's a fun weekend where you're sharing your enjoyment of the hobby and collectively learning, which feels very rewarding. 
another thing I'll mention is that James throughout the course had so many opportunities where he could have plugged or pushed his own brand and his own services as being better than others or the people there should consider buying them etc. He didn't do this at all. We did discuss some of the artist opus brushes but this was as much by other people here wanting to know about them than James himself just bringing it up and talking about them. Which is again another thing I was very pleased about. There's nothing worse than coming on to any sort of learning experience and having somebody tell you of course ours are better blah blah blah. But he didn't go expressly out of his way to push this onto us because that's not what we're there for and that for me was a big positive. While I am mentioning products another thing that was a strong positive impression for me is that while we were discussing some techniques we talked about how some products are designed and promoted for you to use in a way that is deliberately wasteful. I think many of us know this is why some companies use dropper bottles for paint and others do not because dropper bottles are a much better way of conserving your paint and getting the most out of what you have purchased. Other bottle designs can be almost deliberately wasteful. We also talked about other things, how washing your model in ink from head to toe is going to use a lot of product and not even give you a very good effect to your mini. If anything, it's working against you. We also got very into talking about colors from different paint brands, how you can combine those together, how you should find those. We also talked about making your own paint recipes and so on. So we really comprehensively covered the whole deal there. And again, talking about the different paints, the different materials that you can use, all of that stuff was very, very useful for me. One of the big takeaways being that the most common way is not always the best way and learning this will likely save you some money in the future as well. My final overall thoughts are that this course was a very worthwhile use of time. Not just the techniques learned, but the approach to painting that I learned from the course, again, I would say is invaluable. And I really mean that because it's going to change how I paint my models. And as I say, I've got a big project coming up and I'm going to apply everything here to that entire project from start to finish. As I say, the courses are run year round at venues across the UK, but if you are headed this way for a visit, it might be worth checking out if a course is happening near you during your visit or even, you know, coinciding those two things. Now, I mentioned this because on our course for the day, we actually had someone from across the pond who happened to be over here on a short visit and decided to come along for the course because he knew he couldn't get that over there. Also, as I said before, Siege now have a Patreon up and running, which is regularly being updated with techniques. But as I said, that is for online techniques. If you wanted to gain all the extra benefits that I've just talked about and throughout this video, then attending an actual instructional course, I would highly recommend. Now, I also know that Siege have a new course up and coming, which will focus solely on character painting, which I imagine will still be accessible, but maybe more advanced than the essential stuff. And when this course is out, I fully intend to sign up and get in on it. So I'll give you thoughts and feedback as and when that happens. Now, when that does come around, I'll post about it in the community tab here on my YouTube channel, which you guys know I use all the time to talk with you. And I'll post it there so that if you want to come and join in on the course that I'll be participating in, then you're going to be able to do so. So for now, that's my thoughts on Siege Studios and the Essentials Master Course. Now, I will be working with Siege on a currently ongoing basis. If you have any questions specifically about the Essentials Painting Course, please put those in the comments. And you know I always read the comments, so I'll do my best to answer any questions that I can. The next Siege video that I'm going to cover is going to be looking at a model that I'm going to have painted up by Siege Studios, which I will then combine with a lore overview similarly to the Navigator diorama video that I did a while back. And it'll also be a good example of the results you guys can expect from Siege Studios. So I'll just finish up by saying as always guys, this is Luton. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this overview, please drop a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.